so today I'm going to try and show you how I divide a full sheet of watercolor paper. First of all, I like to use Arches cold pressed watercolor paper. So if it's cold pressed, it has the green label and that's my preferred, it's the most versatile. And a full sheet of watercolor paper, no matter what brand, is 22 inches by 30 inches. So that's a big piece of watercolor paper. And I think it is probably in most cases the most economical way of buying your watercolor paper. But it's not practical for everybody to have to store a big sheet of paper like this. And I have put my lighting as best I can I tried to film it in my dining room and it really was so lousy with the lighting that I didn't like it. So let's see if we can see. Can you see there is a watermark here? The watermark is in two of the corners, up opposing corners. And if you can read it, it says arches. Then that side is the front. Doesn't matter if you can paint on both sides, but it's just good to know. Now, once we break it down, you might want to put a little B with a pencil in the corners of your paper if you are concerned about being able to tell the front from the back because it's kind of difficult. Once you paint it for a while like I have, you can do it, you know, by just feeling the paper, but that takes a little while. So the first way I fold my watercolor paper, no matter if it's, this is 140 and I paint a lot of on 300 pounds, I have it with the front side up and then I gently on the long side, so on the 30 inch side, I bend my paper over and line it up, making sure, making sure that my corners and everything is lined up. I don't want to divide it crooked. Our watercolor paper is expensive, but it's well worth it to paint on good paper. Much, much better than wood pulp paper. This is 100% cotton wrap. Once I have a good grip on here and no lotion, clean hands, dry. My hands are very dry because it's a dry climate, but no lotion on your hands because we don't want any lotion or any oils or anything like that on our watercolor paper. So I just slide my free hand and I'm left-handed, so I do it this this way it might be easier for you to do it with the opposite hands, I don't know. And then I just run my hand and my paper, because I live up in 6,000 feet, almost 6,000 feet in the mountains, the Sierra Nevada mountains of Northern California, and it's right on the border of the desert into Nevada, so the climate here is very dry. So that was my first fold, and I don't know if you can see, can you see like my paper, because it's so dry, it almost breaks. You might not have quite that same breakage effect if you are in a, a moisture climate like, you know, Florida or out by the coast of Denmark, where there's always a lot of humidity in the air, or in England for that matter, Great Britain, and many other places in the world. So I put it over and folded it the other way. So this is now the front of the paper. I, and I do it one more time, and I try to get as little sticky fingers on my paper as possible. I usually do this three times. You can do it as many times as is necessary to get the fold so that you, without much effort, can just gently tear the two pieces apart. I do it like this. I've seen many other fancy ways of doing it that I have not mastered. You can also use the edge of your table or you could use a ruler or something like that. Now, the reason I like to tear my paper is because, you know, it comes with this pretty deckled edge, a little bit deckled on the other side too. And that way, if I tear it, I get something similar, an edge similar. So that means I can frame it without putting a mat over it. I can float it if that's what I decide. I have options, but you can certainly, and sometimes I cut my paper, like if I have to cut out up a full sheet like this, and I'm teaching a class where I provide all the materials, for instance, or I want to get a bunch of 8 by 10 sheets, it's better, I don't do it this way, then I measure it out, and then I can get 6 sheets out of a full sheet of 8 by 10s, and then I get a, a piece that I can divide into smaller pieces. But right now I'm just showing you how you can divide a full sheet of watercolor paper into standard sizes that you can measure and frame without having to go to custom matting and framing because that gets so expensive. So this is a half sheet. So that would be 22 inches by half of 30, which is 15. So now's the time to put your little bees on the back because you still have the watermark in one of the corners. Like here, I have it here on this one and I have watermark on the other one too. I'm going to put that aside now. So a half sheet of watercolor paper. It's a nice big surface to paint on if you want to paint big at some point. If you're a beginner, I would say paint on 8 by 10 and max on a quarter sheet. So to get a quarter sheet, oh and by the way I wanted to have told you, half sheet you can get standard mat and frames 20 by 28 or 22 by 28. Those two sizes will fit a half a sheet. 
Now I'm going to divide it into quarter sheets. So again, on the long side, I fold it over and I do the exact same thing as the first time around. I have the front of the paper up and then the back of the paper is down on the table. And that way, that's the one way I handle it the most. So I like to do that on the back. And again, you can paint on both sides. Doesn't matter. Some painters even prefer to paint on the back side. And if you get a crummy painting, you can turn it over and you can paint on the other side. So same thing, fold it over again. So now I have the front side up. So extra careful with the handling. And I press down on the seam there one more time. And now my paper is good to go and I can gently tear it apart. So make sure you do this on a clean surface. I didn't say that to begin with, but a clean surface. Okay, so now you have two quarter sheets and if you had divided the other, you would have four quarter sheets. But anyway, this is then 15 inches on the long side and it's 11 inches on the short side. So now again, you want to divide it on the long side if you want to go down to a smaller size. But here it gets tricky. If you divide it exactly half half, then you would get seven and a half by 11. That's not a standard size. That's exactly half an inch too short on the short side. So instead, I want to divide my 15 inches into seven inches by eight inches because there is a standard size, a size called 8 by 10 and here I would get an 8 by 11 so I get an inch longer and that's the same with your quarter sheet by the way on the long side you actually do have an inch uh, to wiggle room which I kind of like because it gives you a little bit more flexibility if you want to move your paper and if you're floating it it's not a problem so 7 inches by 8 inches and I do the same thing I hang on to it and I crease it and make sure that it's nice and as sharp as sharp as you can get it. And then again, we flip it over, press down, and one more time, flip it over, press down, and then we can tear it apart. And just be careful and do it more times if you feel that you know your your fold is not easy to rip so the next thing that we can do is so this is the standard size that i usually paint on in my demos 8 by 10 and as i said it's actually an inch longer than 10 it's 11 gives you a little wiggle room keep it in mind or you can also i never do but you could you know cut that inch off but i like to have the wiggle room but you still need to know so you don't paint something important out there which you shouldn't anyway don't paint important stuff out on the edges that's not good composition and design. And then I am left with a piece that is seven inches by 11 inches. And I use these if I need to make a palette guide, for instance, which is the palette guide that goes with my Janie Jones travel palette. And here you can see here I'm ready to make a, a guide. And you can see here I just cut it down a little bit on all sides so it'll fit nicely on my on my palette. So that's one option if you have something that like that in your immediate future and if not take your 7 by 11 inch piece of watercolor paper and fold it again on the long side so everything we've done so far is folding on the long side folding on the long side and then I'm going to divide that into two pieces and that's going to be seven inches by five and a half and all you could also leave it like this and you could that's a, a card size so you could paint a nice card so that's another option but I have I, I don't normally paint cards and send out originals. I paint a painting and take a picture of it and then I print it on nice cardstock. Anyway, same thing. And so this way you have two pieces that will be framed nicely in an 8x10 frame and the opening would be 5x7 which is also a standard size. So there you have it. No waste of paper. And this is what you get out of a half a sheet. You got a quarter sheet, you got an 8x10 and you got two 5x7s. So I hope that made sense to you and I've been wanting to film this for a long time but because of you know the setup that it takes I haven't tackled it before but I hope this was helpful and uh, that you could see what I was doing and I thank you so much and give me a thumbs up please if you're watching this on YouTube and if you're watching on Eva Nichols Art Academy thank you so much I'll have this as a free class because this is knowledge that every watercolorist should know and wishing you happy painting and don't have now you don't have to go to the the framing shop I would suggest always and that's what I always tell my students paint on standard sizes so you can go to your local art supply store and you can actually pick a frame off the rack with a mat that fits where you don't have to pay exorbitant prices to have things custom framed because we all know that's very expensive and that's you know fine for certain things 
but if you are framing your beginner watercolors or even your intermediate watercolors you might not want to spend hundreds of dollars maybe fifty dollars is more in your range or less depending on the size of course so there you have it have fun and see you soon in another video